Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Kurt from uh, Liquid Vista, and uh, I just wanted to show you some of the displays that we've got on uh, display here. It's a beautiful sunny day out here in uh, Toulouse, we're at the Freescale uh, facility, and we've got a couple of our displays lined up here. Uh, to the far left, a uh, monochrome display running 30 frames per second video. Uh, next to that, uh, color display, 800 by 600 resolution, both in the 6-inch platforms, running some interactive content, some examples of interactive magazines with full, col fully saturated color and very high reflectance. Uh, next to it, you have, uh, well, my PC running. But it's off, Mac. Right? It's not off, actually. It's actually yeah. running a movie right now, but because of the bright ambient sunlight, uh, one of the characteristics of the screens used in this type of technology is that once you go outside, it's fairly washed out, there's not a lot of color saturation, and it's very difficult to actually see the picture. One of the main, one of the main advantages of Liquid Vista's displays is that you'll have uh, the color experience and the brightness that you're used to indoors that you have in current netbooks or current laptops. But as soon as you go outside, and you obviously want to go outside on a beautiful day like this, you don't have to see any degradation of that performance going forward. Liquid Vista's displays have very high brightness and therefore very good color saturation and very high contrast even though you have a lot of ambient sunlight. So here you have two prototypes. One is only black and white yep. and has a touch screen. Yeah, this, I can this actually do stuff here. A, yeah, you can move it around. You can see it's running video here, but we've added a capacitive touch screen on top of that just to show the possibilities in terms of application you can put on this type of platform. Uh, I'll just scroll through a couple of pages there, uh, a couple so of magazines, a couple of books. Usually when you add video. a touchscreen layer on top, it can uh, lower the readability, right? But there... Yeah, adding a, adding a layer on top of a display always will uh, reduce the readability a bit. You'll have a bit more glare and uh, you'll have reduced optical performance. But because of the fact that our displays are very, or Liquid Vista displays are very bright to start out with, because they have a high aperture ratio, very high reflectance, and don't require the use of polarizing films, um, the effects uh, of a touchscreen on top of that are far less than with, for example, an LCD. Nice. So these are prototypes. Uh, uh, how, how far away is it from, from uh, being an actual product? We're working very hard to get these commercialized. Uh, the intention is that by the second half of 2011, these products will be in full volume in the form that you see them now. So right now we're, we're generally looking at 6-inch to 8-inch platforms for the e-reader space. But, you know, in the future, who will tell? There is no limitation to what sizes our technology can go for and what sizes our technology can fit into. Because what you have to do is that you have to change about 10% of uh, the LCD manufacturing process. Is that how, what you would say? So an existing LCD manufacturer can take their existing manufacturing facilities and convert those with a small conversion uh, to make displays based on uh, Liquid Vista's technology. And these displays being with the brightness that you see today, uh, with the same indoor performance as LCD displays that you, for example, have in this MacBook out here. Yeah. But in addition to that, with a significantly lower power consumption because of the fact that we can drive the displays based on content with a much lower frequency than, for example, LCD, and the fact that um, you can scale up the uh, refresh rates of the display depending on the content that you have on there. Now, the display uh, samples you see, uh, you see here are running. Um, we have demos based on Freescale's IDAT Linux 51 uh, host platform as well working. We have those available as system development kits for customers. And the intrinsic low power capabilities of our displays compared with uh, the Freescale IDOT MX51 platform are actually a perfect fit to ensure that in the future when we come up with these applications and products, people can make products that ensure freedom not only because you can use them indoor and outdoor, but also because the battery life is you know, a factor multiple times actually better than current devices. If you would, for example, take an iPad today and you'd put a Liquid Vista type display into it, uh, you'd be able to use it outside and you'd be able to use it for days without charging instead of hours. So we're still here uh, showing the Liquid Vista and uh, you have some layers, that, the way that you make the, the screen. How does that work? Yeah, I'll just pause it a minute here so I can further explain. I think one of the big advantages that our technology has over other emerging technologies is that current LCD manufacturers can basically take their existing lines and manufacturing facilities and with a very small conversion, uh, just a few steps, actually change it and make them capable to make our displays. If you look at this little animation that shows, uh, well, it shows it indoors now on my Mac, which is a bit better than outdoors, but it shows the number of layers and the stacks that are just required to make up a uh, Liquid Vista Electro Wedding based display. And you can see there are a number of different layers on top of there, very analogous and very similar to what's in the LCD uh, market. 
With LiquiVista we can also go from glass to potential flexible substrates for true flexible and uh, maybe large screen displays. Mm -hmm. And you can basically see here the switching behavior of the oil, water and dye mixture that we have in the displays. The fundamental principle is an optical switch. You either open it or you close it and you let light through and not. And this is basically the animation you see here. Uh, the oil and water mixture being switched open and closed, thereby letting light through or blocking light off. Nice. So, um, what could you say in terms of uh, these prototypes and how much you can improve them? Is it something like the, 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 the readability on this one can actually be improved even further? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, these, the, the prototypes that you see here are based in, uh, are, are all created on a prototyping facility, so we don't have mass production design rules and uh, mass production capabilities. Uh, once you move to a fully automated uh, mass production fab, you can go with very critical design rules and therefore even increase the brightness and the contrast uh, of the products, of the final products, when you go into volume production. All right, and uh, so you expect them to be ready second half of the next year, right? Second half of 2011 is when we uh, expect to have the first volume shipments of, uh, of these LiquiVista products, whether they be black and white, whether they be color, whether they be uh, fully reflective, uh, fully transmissive, or even transflective for the optimum mix between good indoor uh, use and good outdoor use, which we just showed earlier on. Uh, that is what we expect indeed to have ready. So for now you're year. announcing transflective, you're, you're announcing a backlight support. Yeah. Yep. And um, and so, so how, how much is the power consumption on your screen compared to a normal LCD? Um, it's it's far, it's far better, and it's you know not not, to, not not easily quantifiable. But what I can say about it is that we have up to four to five. Uh, uh, times more transmission through the panels, so we're more efficient with light, meaning you need less power for your backlight, which is already a big advantage because the backlight consumes the most power in your display system. Um, and in addition to that, we can scale down the refresh frequencies of our displays. For example, if you're looking at this picture here, which is basically static, doesn't move around a lot, we can scale the frequencies all the way down to one hertz and in the future maybe even lower which means that you can be very, very efficient with regards to power. And then when you need video and you need high refresh rates, you basically just scale back up to those frequencies. So how could you say you, you position yourself against other uh, uh, alternatives in, in terms of screen that are those that are about to come out, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, those that have, for example, there's a piece of chi, yeah. Um, yeah. Mirasol and Mirasol. all these, what do you say? Uh, well, I think in a, in a very big nutshell, uh, our display is the only one besides LCD that can do three modes, reflective, transmissive, and reflective. You can choose what you want there. In addition to that, our display technology is one that can uh, uh, propagate very low power because we can scale down indeed to this one hertz frequency I mentioned earlier, and we have a very high level of transmission of our, our sound. Another major advantage is that our displays can be manufactured by existing LCD manufacturers worldwide, meaning that there are, it's non-proprietary and is very flexible in terms of who manufactures it. And in terms of price, what, what would you try to reach? What do you think it's going to cost? Uh, I think that's, that's stretching it. But I think yeah. we, we, we definitely want to be very competitive in terms of yeah. our pricing with regards to uh, LCD technology. Yeah. So uh, if it could be mass manufactured, uh, the components of your screen are actually lower cost in, in theory than what's on an LCD? There's no uh, liquid crystal material. There's no polarizers. So that's already a big, uh, big difference. Yeah. But you need oil. Yeah, oil, yeah. water, and dye, which are fairly okay. commonly available materials. Uh, all in a certain substance, obviously, but... Um, all right, yep. okay. but thanks a lot. Thanks. You're welcome.